Hello guys, welcome aboard to another Starbase ship showcase. Today I'll be showcasing the Jilted BB made by Biospug over at the SSC. Now this is an incredible little ship that has a very interesting design as I'm sure you can see. We've got solar panels all over the exterior here. We've got these super neat pylons coming out the front, little decorative pylons. And this video is going to be a real treat for you guys because this ship has an incredible amount of YOLO. It is the craziest ship when it comes to YOLO that I've seen so far. All right, let's go ahead and start at the back and we'll work our way to the front. Starting at the back here, we can see that we have a, a whole slew of box thrusters all painted uh, with different colors. We've got the solar panels arranged here on the back. We've got the trademark angled thrusters here. And then Biospug has also went in and added in a whole load of different spots down through here for you to go in and mount in some extra fuel rods. Moving more towards the front, we have these golden radiators along with more angled thrusters. Now that we make our way to the front, we'll notice the quad eye sand setup. And then in the back there, we've got three more navigation units uh, to help out with the onboard compass. On the front here, we have quite a few range finders and this is going to help with the asteroid avoidance system. We've got three mining lasers two ore collectors, four tractor beams, and on the bottom here we have our material scanner. The Jilted BB comes equipped with 76 million propellant. It goes almost max speed uh, empty and then full it goes 115 meters a second. The ship comes equipped with 200 ore crates. And just look at the design of this thing. Wow. It's quite incredible, isn't it? What a beautiful ship. And then let's go ahead now and go towards the interior of the ship and we'll take a look down in here. This is going to be very surprising. I could get in, there's a whole load of buttons. A tremendous amount of buttons. So I'm gonna take this moment to go ahead and welcome in our special guest Biospug to help us explain all of this. Welcome Biospug. Right. I think Larry, thanks for having me. Um, so, yeah, um, I added a ton of features to the base uh, tilted, um, which requires a lot of buttons. Uh, there's um, the hover, um, on your left you have the top section which uh, shows you the navigational data. I added the waypoint system from Archer Geo with a 30 storage location. It's linked up to the ISAN uh, receivers um as well as the compass uh the ISEN is in there just as an extra navigation setup it's not really used for anything else but reading uh, and then on the right side we have the actual compass your basic forward and backwards the some other buttons there there's a lot to go over in this um there's also the speedometer as you can see uh, from mori watari which uses the lock frame I've tried to come to put all the possible things that I like about ships in, into one design. Um, and this is the, yeah, the end result so far. Um, and if, if I may yeah. step in for a moment here, I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys noticed or not. And this may change, but a lot of these are labeled. And he's done this by putting uh, these panels behind the actual buttons. And so we can see that some of them have labels. And then we've also got the singularity logo down here that's that's moving around so that's super super cool and the little turtle animation as well really really neat all right sorry biospec i just wanted to work that in there we'll uh i'll hop out i just woke you. i just woke up the turtle as well so <laughs> since you mentioned it yeah oh yes there you go <laughs> so one of the things that i that annoyed me the most of the jilted is the limited uh, view from the cockpit after mining you want i wanted to this is the first change that i added is like the slider uh, with the seat so i could slide out and have a, a greater view of the environment so I could spot my next uh, roid better um and yeah the, the that was where the experimentation started um because this uses a duct slider and and i like to tinker with all these kind of things uh, so for instance you also see as uh, as singularity mentioned uh, four tractor beams 
they have no real purpose. They, they're just on here to, to mess around with. And if you, if you feel adventurous and write some scripts for it, you, you're good to go. You don't need to change anything. The this, this ship already has it. And it's fun to, to mess around with these tractor beams, just in general. Um, um, yeah, what are the other features? Well, we've got this, um, yeah. this dance button here towards the back. What does this do? Oh, yeah. Um, so if you remember a couple of weeks ago, there was only one way to remove um, uh, extra ores from your inventory by dragging them one by one. So I uh, wanted to have a method so my ship would be mining whilst I would be clearing my inventory one by one. Um, and I automated this and I called it dances. Uh, I don't know if it's laser sweep. I, don't, I mean, I've seen different names being in use, but I liked the, the idea of a dance. And, and let's just run one. Sure. So what I would do is enable the mining and then enable the laser. And there's a safety feature. As you can see, there's a rangefinder pointing at me. And see, as soon as I turn myself, the laser will turn on and it will turn off as soon as I get out of the seat. Um, since we have no targets or nothing in front of us, I'm going to have to override the laser so to force it to fire. And if I would enable the dance now, you'll see that it's going to like slowly open up the laser beams. That was the whole point. But it's not doing it slowly anymore because I messed with the target velocities. Um, and it's gently, gently rolling the, the ship around just to make sure that you keep hitting new piece, new parts of the roid. And then the second dance that I added is actually going to make you a bit dizzy because it's going to center the lasers and then slowly open them up whilst trying to roll the ship as fast as possible to keep carving away from the, the center of the, the roid. And the whole idea was I would be able to clear my inventory whilst this is running. Obviously, since a week or so, we can now just mass delete items, so that's not really that relevant anymore. It's still something that I added along the way. That's super, super neat. And the ship looks really stable while you're rolling, too. Cool. Nice. Well, what else do we have here in the interior of the ship? Mm -hmm. Just name it. Name something you're you want to find out more about okay so over here on the left hand side we've of course got our different waypoints and it looks like we can save and load different waypoints as well uh, we've got our autopilot our asteroid avoidance system our typical cruise button here it looks like we have a button to fix uh, the turrets if mm -hmm. they ever get out of whack and then of course the big red lever to or handle, that is, to reboot the ship. Okay, and up here towards the front, again, we have my, our mining mode, our laser mode, our approach, and our dance. And then, would you explain this, these two buttons next to the, the four quadrant here, the green and the red button? Yeah, those are duplicates of the ones that are here in the front as well, so it's a general on-off button and the override button it's just repeated there so for easier access when the seat is uh, out so a lot of these panels on the outside that you're facing are duplicates of the ones inside they're just for just so that you can reach them when when the seat is moved to the forward position oh, okay gotcha so the green would be on and off and then of course the yes. red would be the override yeah, okay cool then up here like he had just mentioned we've got some buttons duplicated again to help uh, once mm -hmm. you're a little bit forward. Over because here. I enjoy flying the ship whilst I'm actually out. Uh. <laughs> yeah, not too many ships take you from being in the cockpit and throw you right out there, mm -hmm. out in the, the, the space wind. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, okay. Okay, I gotta ask about this button big red button with a cover all right that one is supposed to work as a safe zone indicator and if you push it it will also just turn off the ship or that that's the whole plan i'm not sure if it actually does turn off the ship <laughs> <laughs> to change color based on your safe zone status well the documentation for all of the interior here is documented super well and you can uh find the ship in two places both on the sss 
website and then it's also on the the singularities discord as well so uh, you can hop into the ssc and then it's got a, a whole channel there with everything you need to know now there is a few more things i wanted to touch on okay this is actually something i missed the first time what's this derpa here it's also it's it's a logo that that we we came up with like the department for education of research and and it's like a a, a joke oh okay DARPA, so darpa but just to indicate that we love tinkering with stuff and yeah. experimenting i wasn't sure if that was that was correlated with the real world or <laughs> no the it's real world darpa yeah but and then let's uh let's head towards the back here and we've got a little point to refuel, so if we dive down in here in the back, we press the refuel button. The whole rear end of the ship opens up, and uh, we've got these two red resource bridges here, and that's going to allow us to refuel the ship. And then the green one down here as well. Super, super cool. And there, there's an incredible amount to the ship. It, it would take someone a long time to to sit down and, and get everything worked out it's there's so many features but it's not hard to fly and it flies like a dream right so all right looking down under here this is where we're going to change out our fuel tanks and you can see that all of these panels are numbered so we know which tanks uh, have how much fuel and you can look at that up in the cockpit um, but there's also a spot, if I flip around up here at the top, where it's indicated. Or maybe it was the bottom bias. I think it was the bottom. They all do the same. I have a couple of them because they just look cool. <laughs> ah, here we go. Yes. So we have these, uh, these lit buttons here, and these buttons will change based on how much fuel you have. So I believe if it's above... 25% the button will turn green they come standard as this purple and then once you run out of fuel and you get down there to about the 5% range they will actually turn red and then eventually turn off once you run out of fuel but they're all numbered so you can see um, how much fuel you have in what tank right super cool it was for those times that the uh, instance, if you do blueprint blue, uh, blueprint refills like with the uh, U2, sometimes the game just grabs empty empty rods and puts them back in, and so with the colored buttons you would instantly see like oh my god the game messed up like uh, two of my rods are still empty you know. Oh okay. Look at the YOLO room. Now that we're down here in the interior of the ship again, let's go ahead and take a look at all this. This is an incredible, incredible amount of YOLO racks. This is nuts. And so we've got, you know, what we have here is the YOLO to run all the shit. This is crazy. And they're all painted, color coordinated, uh, labeled. Super, super cool. And what's this thing towards the back here? Is this our little cargo lock deal? Yeah, that's the speedometer. Um... Oh on tracks you see there's a range finder behind it yeah you can actually monitor let, let me start flying for it you'll see what's happening beam of the range finder is going to start extending through the lock frame oh. this distance this distance is like directly related to your your actual speed that uh, is that's how super cool wow. it's really cool yeah you have instant speed reporting on your cockpit Instead of this like unreliable ice and uh, speed huh and then we've also got some extra panels back here are these replacement panels mm -hmm. neat you can add some spare racks here like that are not connected to the network so that if you're working on some yolo or you want to make sure that the script is not running you can just swap them over to one one of these side racks because they are not connected to the power. Oh, okay. I on top see. I also added spares. like the yeah, mm -hmm. and Just on top I added like the empty panels so you can work on YOLO and put the chips on top of there. Sure. Um, and the same with the sockets next to the pilot seat. If you want to create like your own laser pattern, 
can put the chip next to your seat and have it like run in front of you whilst you look at the pattern. Where's that one at? On the left side of the cockpit, yeah. Oh, okay. Huh. All the bolts in the cockpit have been have been tried to bolt as much things from behind as possible. Oh, yes. That's... I, kinda, I like the result. Uh... <laughs> A boltless cockpit. That looks really nice. Most... This, yeah, this also thing like you. I made sure that I was able to enable all the rangefinders without triggering the avoidance. Just added these extra button. And this this distance readout here is now like combined. So now it it shows me that you are 18 meters away, and now you're three meters away. It's because the outer rangefinders are a bit further back, right? Oh, okay. All these all these rangefinders are are reporting back to the same distance field, which is really convenient when you have like approach just hit you just enable all your rangefinders and you can safely approach without worrying like oh if i miss my target you know not keeping my target uh, lit up my approach script is gonna act up um gonna forget to break because it doesn't detect the object anymore right um so i i, I found that really cool how i managed to do that with just memory relays um, so no YOLO involved for that. <laughs> also the hover mode oh. that you can like enable a hover mode and have a lever that, that sets your desired distance from the surface. Um, approach also that the approach distance is on the same lever. Like this, this same lever that is yellow, the yellow lever here, is also controlling your approach distance. Um, um, what else? Oh yeah, that's just for fun. Uh, the rangefinders. I I had have their search length on a slider, so I can make them <laughs> really tiny. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Or even turn them like into dots by disabling it altogether. So I. Oh got... yeah, and there's one. The, the niftiest feature I think is this one. If you go behind, it's the emergency storage. I'm really happy that I added that for myself as well. The goal is that this, uh, these four crates, together with the four in, on the other side of the ship, the rear, and they are only connected to, to each other. So if you connect your resource bridge, you'll see that you only have eight crates. Oh. Uh, so they're, they're separate from the other crates, so you won't accidentally clear those. So, you will, so the, the, the point is, after you created the ship, you fill this up with some ice, some exorium, some, you know, so the stuff that, that's going to help you from surviving is a, a bad crash, right? Sure. That, that was the whole idea of this emergency storage, so to say. And I'm really stoked that it works out so, so neatly. Good thinking, but it's able to squeeze it in. Because hmm? before we would just toss all that ore in the, uh, the ship hold. Yeah, but if you forgot, you know, you, you just cleared your ship, you know, you're on your way to something uh, without, like, taking into account, I might crash into uh, <laughs> it. was just for that, because I know I'm forgetful. I, I, I found myself leaving Origin with a, without a single or even without a single item in my backpack, you know? I didn't even have a ball to. I had nothing, you know? I mean, I, I am kind of forgetful on these things. And this, this, this will definitely save me <laughs> one day. <laughs> So wait, let, let, so you grab the weld too? Let me show you. Uh, oh, it's portable, too. isn't it? Yes, it's a portable laser. If you have like a tier 10 and you want to do it sneaky, just unweld this beam. I don't have any. Okay, let me have a refuel. There we go. Uh, you disconnect it, right? You mm -hmm. then uh, make sure that you have your uh, tether connected. So this resource bridge is set to in, and there's an extra one that's set to out right here. We quickly weld up this beam so it doesn't move. So you unweld this beam. Now you have a portable laser. So if you want to mine manually, you just grab onto this. Wait, let's not point it at the ship. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So hit the big button, and so you see the rangefinder. Yep. Now on, and whenever something comes closer than 20 meters, it's going to fire off the laser. <laughs> Powered by your ship. <laughs> <laughs> I'll grab it real quick. I need to get this off to works. the side. Oh my ouch, goodness. Ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? And on the other side, I have a portable tractor beam. Oh, because man. I, it, there's something that I noticed that when you... 
as an endo when you hold the tractor beam it's like you're able to pull harder than when it's mounted to your ship so that's why i also added a portable tractor beam on the other side and to place it back is yeah you just like try to hover it in space until it snaps and then you just weld it back the the features are endless this might have to be a two-part <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Of course, all the workbenches. I mean, you should uh, you should see my ship in the live build. I have all the attachments, on all the benches. On the inside, I have like for each tool here on the back on the shelf here. Each tool ha is here with its spare. You know, like I have a spare weld tool, a spare bolt tool with magazine. I have all the all the guns that I can craft are here. You know, like with, with ammo and everything. It's like it looks so cool when you have like. A, the backup oh. storage is filled with with the nice ores, you know, like some Vimerium, some some Exorium, all the stuff that you need to, to repair your ship. Sure, and then all these solar panels. Huh? <laughs> we've got the different crafting benches on either mm -hmm. side, and then one. There's yeah. the other one here. So and it's then... no longer it's no longer really a miner. It's more like a, a, a test platform, you know. Y use it for whatever you want, kind of ship. Uh, meant for long explorations, you know, to, to have like a full floating you know, workbench and, and everything that comes with it as platform. Yeah. It's borderline luxury with all the features. <laughs> <laughs> you just get a little bit of everything with this ship, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Well, thank you so much for... Thanks for doing this. Uh, oh, yeah. this is... This is quite incredible. I've seen some, like mm -hmm. the... The Kraken had... An incredible amount of YOLO, but this thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, if you if you come down here and just look in the cockpit, when you say spaceship, this is kind of what I imagine with all the, the buttons, <laughs> right? All right, guys, all I have to say is, wow, we went through so many features there, and I'm sure that there was more that we didn't even get to cover, maybe some smaller features, um, but how incredible is this ship i so biospug has probably put hundreds of hours into this ship this was kind of his first creation uh in the ship designer which he was building off of the original jilted but he has just added so much to it i mean it, it's crazy is all i have to say oh my goodness um but yeah, there are a few more things that I would like to touch on just to wrap up the video, then we'll we'll do the, the final wrap up afterwards. But um, as you can see here, we've got colored beams all over the ship. So that it's really, really neat. That's something that a buddy at Biospug found out you could do. Uh, so he's went ahead and incorporated that into his ship. And then another small feature is that Biospug has actually went in and allowed the user to develop their own features. And you can do this because he's, like for instance, he's went ahead and incorporated in the tractor beams and they're hooked up and ready to go. They're already labeled. And so if you wanted to do something with tractor beams, you've already got a platform to do so. He's given you the foundation for that. And another one, just to mention real quick, are these speakers. Again, he's already got these things labeled, wired up, right? So all you have to do is, is come in and write the YOLO scripts uh, for whatever you might want to do for the speakers or for something like the tractor beams, and you're good to go. You've already got yourself a, a foundation, if you will. Um, another thing in the cockpit, actually, uh, the ship has whack-a-mole, and so we've got the panel here so you can fly along play some whack-a-mole all right uh, so let's go ahead and, and wrap up the ship so again the YOLO was incredible um, it does go max speed empty so you've got that it still goes a pretty good lick way down about what 110 meters a second I think I mentioned earlier it's a fantastic ship for those long-range missions uh, because it does have the ability to pretty much tackle anything. It's got asteroid avoidance, mining capabilities. Uh, it's got some crazy stuff when it comes uh, to the waypoints and the different 
compass like the compass ball he's got incorporated in on here um he's got a really really nice speedometer that you guys saw earlier i have never seen this done before that's really neat i'm not sure if he's the one that came up with that or someone else but the speedo is really really cool i believe beforehand it was just going off of the uh, navigation units um and was probably something incorporated in with isan to get the speedo uh, but yeah, I, I mean, you've got your crafting benches here. You can pretty much go anywhere, do anything with this ship. I don't believe it has a warp core or a fast travel core, that is, but you could easily find a place to mount that on somewhere. That wouldn't be much of an issue to slap one of those on here. It looks fantastic. Uh, probably the thing that I like the most in terms of looks is probably these decorative beams coming off of here. I guess they're not beams, pylons, whatever they are. Um, just really, really cool. It gives me a, a vibe from Alien, or maybe it's Aliens. One of the ships, I think maybe the Nostromo. I don't know. I'll, I'll find a picture and put it in here, but it reminds me of that ship with all the, uh, the pylons or whatever coming off. So that's really neat. The only con that I really have for this ship, and this is not too big of a con at all, and for some people it's not not a con, um, but it can be a little bit overwhelming. There are so many features on board, it's just like, holy shit. It's, it almost made me feel like I was trying to learn a, DC, a new DCS module. Uh, when I was going through this ship and of course I was lucky enough to have the the designer right here next to my side to to help me with it um, but everything's you know he's got it all fantastically documented and the base features that you would need just to do your everyday type of stuff that's really straightforward it's just there's a lot of small features incorporated in here like for instance this little deal here that tells you the fuel level and shows you the fuel actually it's on the bottom um but you know that might not be something that's too self-explanatory you might have to consult the manual but he's he's got all that laid out really well and this ship is still being updated he updates it maybe once a week uh with new features fi fixes you know starbase might update their game and uh he has to come in and fix something so it is a a ship that's being actively developed so that's really cool but yeah overall uh this has got to be one of the seven wonders of starbase he has done a fantastic job with this now as far as i know this is his only ship but that's probably because he spent such an enormous amount of time on one ship um so to conclude i would say it's an awesome ship if you don't already have it i think it's a must for just about everyone to have in their fleet of ships it is just, you know, even if you've got a, a ship that you like flying, like a, a daily flyer almost, if you will, um, I would still recommend purchasing this ship because, you know, it's something just if you want to sit in it and mess around, you could sit in the cockpit and mess around for quite some time and keep yourself busy. So it, it's worth having around, trust me. Um, but I would like to go ahead and take this moment to thank Biospug for coming on the the show and and going over the ship with me uh thank you so much for coming on bios you've done an absolutely incredible job with this ship and i really really enjoyed showcasing it we've this has been in the works for a while now uh he updates the ship so much that we kept pushing it back we're like okay well how about doing the the showcase now but you know then he'd be like oh well i'm adding in you know this new feature and this new feature and it just kept going and going and going and he's still doing that but I, at some point i said all right we we got to showcase the ship we'll we'll come back to it if you add in a whole bunch of more new features um but it's constantly being developed so that's awesome if you guys enjoyed the video uh please let me know give me a thumbs up subscribe and comment down below on what you thought of this ship what an incredible ship thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you next time have a good one